Now, we approach a, a really important and fundamental concept in quantum theory in general and quantum computation in particular, and that is entanglement. Now, what exactly is entanglement? I would like to illustrate this with two qubits, A and B, uh, represented by the two block spheres. And we've just seen that if the um, two qubits individually are in pure states, then the, the combination of the two qubits uh, the, is also in a pure state. The composite state is of the two qubits is just the tensor product of the two. And that's again a pure state. Uh, it's again, it's represented, it's a unit vector in the composite Hilbert space. So it's again a pure state. In the composite Hilbert space, of course, you can construct arbitrary um, superpositions of these product states. Yeah? And um, a particularly important family of such superposition states of two qubits are the Bell states. Here I show you the general definition um, of the Bell states. They have two indices, uh, J and K. Um, each ind index can take two values, zero or one. So in total, you have four Bell states. Let me look at one specific example. Here we go. This is once again the formula from the slide for the Bell states. Let's look at a specific example uh, to make it a bit more explicit. Let's consider the example where both J and K are zero. So this is the Bell state beta with the indices zero, zero, subscript zero, zero. So then, um, the first uh, summand, this is zero, zero. Then the factor, the prefactor minus one to the power j, so that's in this case to the power, the power zero, this is one, so we just have plus. And then we have one, and one minus k in this case is equal to one. So the Bell state beta zero zero is, is the superposition of the basis state zero zero of the two qubits and the basis state one one of the two qubits. Yeah? And of course I'm allowed to do that. That's the superposition principle. I can form arbitrary superpositions of the basis states. This is obviously a pure state. Yeah? It's um, uh, the basis states are unit vectors in the composite Hilbert space, and this linear combination is again a unit vector in composite Hilbert space. So this is a this is a pure state. Now we said previously um, that when when the two qubits individually are in pure states then the two qubits as a whole are also in a pure state, namely the product state, the tensor product of the two states. Yeah? And now let's investigate whether the converse statement is also true. Here we have uh, the two qubits in a pure state, in this particular Bell state. Is it still true that the two qubits individually are in pure states. Is it possible to write this Bell state as a tensor product of uh, two individual pure states? The answer is no. I mean, you can try. You can try to write this as a product, a tensor product of two unit vectors. You won't find uh, such unit vectors. 
Yeah. One way to see that is as follows. You can also, you can pose the problem in a slightly different way. You can say, let's look at an observable A, which refers to the first qubit only. So this is um, an observable A for um, the first qubit only. Okay. And now let's consider the expectation value of that observable in this particular Bell state. Now we know what we must do for the expectation value. We sandwich the observable between our state vector. Now here one, we must uh, be careful about one aspect. These, the Bell state is defined in the composite Hilbert space. The observable A is defined only in the Hilbert space of the first qubit. But we can easily construct an observable in or an operator in the composite Hilbert space, which still effectively uh, refers to the first qubit only. Namely, by taking the tensor product of A with the unit operator in the Hilbert space of the second qubit. Yeah, so this and this tensor product um, is now an observable in the full Hilbert space of both qubits, but um, it's trivial in for the second qubit and it describes properties only of the first qubit. Let's calculate this expectation value in the Bell state. Mm. From the bra and the cat, we get a factor one over square root of two each. So together this gives us a one half. And then we have for the bra, the sum of the basis states 0, 0, and 1, 1. Then we have the tensor product A with unit operator. And then we have the, uh, the sum of the basis cats 0, 0, plus 1, 1. Now with our rules for the tensor product, um, we can multiply this out and we get a number of terms. We get here uh, 0, 0, A tensor 1, 0, 0. Then we get um, the combination 0, 0, A tensor 1, 1, 1, and we get this one here. And finally, 1, 1, A tensor unit, 1, 1, yeah? So these are all the contributions to the expectation value. Let's look specifically at this one here. We also know the rule for, um, first of all, how the tensor product of operators acts on the tensor product of vectors. And we also know how to take scalar products of tensor products. Um, essentially that all works individually. So here we have a product of base state is referring to system, the first qubit, then the observable A referring to the first qubit, and then basis vector one 
referring to the first qubit. Yeah, so this is basically this basis state, this operator, and this basis state times The same expression now for the second qubit. Yeah, then we have this basis state zero, the unit operator, and this basis state one. Okay. But you see, um, I mean, the unit operator is trivial, it doesn't do anything. So here you have the scalar product of basis state zero with basis state one, they are orthogonal, so this vanishes, okay? So this whole term here vanishes. And for the same reason, this mixed term here also vanishes. And we are left with the other two terms. And there again, we can write this, um, we can decompose it into two factors and the factor involving the unit operator is trivial. So here in this first example, we get the scalar product of zero, unit operator zero, and since the basis uh, state is normalized, this is equal to one. And the same here, down here, with the basis state one. So what remains at the end of the day is one half, zero, a, zero, and this all lives in the Hilbert space of the first qubit plus one half one a one. And again, it all lives in the Hilbert space of the first qubit. Now remember from uh, last week that we can, um, write this in the following form. We can take out the one half. Now, and then we have the sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix representation of the observable A in the standard basis. And this is nothing but the trace of A. Or we can write it slightly differently. Um, it's the trace of one half times unit operator times A. And to make explicit this is that this all happens in the Hilbert space of the first qubit, I also write a little index here below the trace. Yeah? Now you should, from our review of quantum theory last week, you should recognize this form. It has the form familiar from Gleason's theorem. It has the form trace of statistical operator times observable. Yeah, where we identify half the unit operator in Hilbert space of the first qubit with the density operator. Now, um, we talked last week about the distinction between pure states and mixed states. Yeah. And we said mixed states are um, represented by statistical operators. And um, a statistical operator can also describe a pure state, that's a special case. And the statistical operator describes a pure state if and only if it is a projector. Yeah. In this case, you see, if you, if you want to calculate the expectation value of an arbitrary observable for the first qubit in this Bell state, then the expectation value always has the form that you know, that you are familiar with from Gleason's theorem with the statistical operator. 
So effectively, it is as if the first qubit um, were in the state, individually were in the state described by this statistical operator. And this statistical operator here does not describe a pure state because one half times the unit operator is not a projector. It's not a pure state. Yeah? This, um, this statistical operator here, rho A, is called the reduced state. Of the first qubit yeah, of system A. And the reduced state of the first qubit is not pure. It is a mixed state. So to come back to our uh, general considerations, we have here an example where the combined system of the two qubits is in a pure state described by a Bell state, but an individual qubit is described by, um, by a mixed state. Yeah? The state is that um, mathematical object that you need in order to calculate arbitrary expectation values for that system. So that is the reduced state that we just talked about. And the reduced state is a mixed state. It's not a pure state. So we have here the, um, we, we started out, or I started out with the question, is the converse also true? That if the composite state is pure, that then the systems individually are also in pure states. And we just saw from this example that this is not the case. Yeah? And this holds true, not just for the specific belt state zero, zero, but for all four belt states um, defined here on this page. And any composite state, which like the belt states, is pure, but gives reduced states for the constituents which are not pure, is called entangled.